after January 6, a lot of corporations said they were gonna do the right thing and they were not gonna support the insurrectionists. How'd that work out? Let's find out. Uh, joining me is Andy Hirschfeld. He's a contributor for TYT Investigates. Uh, and Andy's written uh, quite a bit about this. Uh, good to see you back. Thanks for having me. No problem. So um, Motorola was one of the companies uh, that uh, said after January 6, they wouldn't contribute again. Am I right about that? They said that and they did not necessarily follow through on that promise. Yeah, so let's talk about it. How long uh, did they seem to follow through? And how do we know that they stopped following through? Well, they lasted a couple months. Actually, a crew reported that they started giving to some federal candidates not long after they said that they, they were gonna pause. My reporting in particular focuses on some of these state level election gubernatorial races in Nevada, Florida, and Texas. Right, and so when the corporations made that announcement, uh, you can go back and check the tape on TYT. I said, yeah, nonsense, I'm never gonna do it, right? It'll, it'll last a tiny amount of time, then they'll go back to greasing all the politicians because it's too good for business, uh, bribery well, works. Public uh, relations uh, lasts uh, just as long as most people pay attention. Exactly, and when they uh, do the big announcement, that's it, we're not giving them money anymore. The, all the press covers it uh, because they wanna say, "Oh, look at how wonderful corporations are. And then later, uh, when they st stop doing the pledge, just a couple of months later, no one other than TYT covers it. <laughs> so then that, that's how you win in public relations and that's how mainstream media does propaganda. Okay, so let's talk about the specific, specifics. Um, so uh, Greg Abbott, um, is he an uh, election denier? Does he think that Trump won 2020? He's not downplaying it. He's 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 not saying that Trump lost. Uh, he's towing the line. He's uh, but frankly, not unequivocally unequivocally going out there and saying Trump lost. Get over it is uh, just as bad as anything else. Quite frankly, right. So he said. Uh, Walking that line that almost all the Republicans have to walk now, uh, where they desperately try to avoid uh, being a brazen liar and s declaring that they hate America and were happy that it, there was a near coup attempt, but at the same time they don't want to speak against the coup attempt for fear of Donald Trump. So uh, I'm sure Motorola has taken note of that and they have not given to him anymore, right? They are continuing to give. <laughs> We've actually, I, I raised this uh, to when I reached out for comment. I mentioned this. In fact, this is a series of stories, so we gave them multiple occasions to weigh in on this topic. So this has been in the forefront of, of their public relations, uh, you know, inbox for quite a while. So they've essentially just been ignoring us. Yeah. Um, we're in bad, bad times. Okay, before we go to DeSantis. We're gonna go to Sheriff Joe Lombardo of Clark County, Nevada. Cuz I actually think that might be uh, the most egregious example. Uh, and this is one of uh, Andy's stories on tyt.com that you should check out. We'll have the links down below. So Andy, what happened there? Well, Motorola is giving to this candidate. The candidate in particular, Joe Lombardo, as you mentioned, uh, he is the county sheriff in Clark County, which is Las Vegas. And in that particular county, back about a decade ago, uh, Motorola, he, uh, he brokered a deal with Motorola to have them essentially uh, operate the communications for the sheriff and police department down there. Uh, so now, about 10 years later, as he's, he's running uh, for governor, why not continue that relationship? Right, so it, it really toes the line there of something that, that kind of appears as if I'm playing some political favors. Uh, you did this for me, I'll do this for you. It's it's not just the standard, and this is ethically, uh, it's it's not it's not great ethically either way, but donating to a candidate specifically for what appears to be political favors. Uh, in this particular instance, there's something directly you can point to, uh, not necessarily just in a lot of these other conversations of 
uh, with with uh, political donations from large corporations, where they may adopt policies, uh, they may fight for policies that help the interests of those corporations. There are direct examples uh, for this specific corporation. Yeah, well, let me ask you a funny question. Um, is there any other reason that co corporations give to politicians other than to maximize their profit and to get goodies from the government? Um, I mean, not really, no. Um, <laughs> there is actually, there is one other thing. Um, there, what I, th I actually have this conversation a lot with people who see some of my reporting and I say, you know, this corporation gave a thousand dollars to this candidate. A thousand dollars doesn't sound like a lot of money, uh, especially in in politics. But the, the, it's about what the symbol of what that represents, right? If a politician says no to that thousand thousand dollar donation from X organization, that organization is then going to spend millions of dollars trying to get their opponent elected. So there is something to be said there where turning down a donation is a big gesture. It's a it's a it's a big thing to do. Yeah, that's the old silver or lead uh question that uh Pablo Escobar would uh put to people. Now I could give you money or I could end you, right? And in this case it would be ending their political career. And uh, if you think that uh, lobbyists don't do that, uh, I encourage you to check out what happened to Nina Turner in uh, Cleveland. <laughs> so, um, and that's how corruption works. Uh, Chantel Brown, on the other hand, has a lovely cushy job in Washington DC because she told all those folks, well, golly gee, I will take your money after all. Um, so now we then return to DeSantis or we get to DeSantis. So uh, I'm going to be totally shocked if uh, he's also taking these corporate contributions and Motorola is back to giving him money. Yeah, the situation in Florida is much like the situation in Nevada. There's a direct relationship between DeSantis and Motorola directly. In fact, he uh, Motorola was trying to get their equipment to work specifically with some of the law enforcement agencies in the state. The governor actually vetoed the legislation and had to rewrite the budget to switch from a different provider to Motorola based on the pressure that the company was putting on DeSantis. Then the courts came back and said, no, you can't do that. So it reverted back to to what it was, but you know the the, the what Motorola did, um, and, and and what DeSantis, how DeSantis took that was, was already there. Yeah, DeSantis. Uh, well, look, I don't know if there's too much outside of your expertise, but DeSantis pretends to be a populist, like a lot of Republicans these days do, right? Oh, we fight on the culture wars, and he's going to stick up for you and your kids, unless they're trans or gay, in which case he's going to bully them on behalf of the straight kids. It's just a real upstanding populist, right? Um, but he takes tons and tons of corporate donations, and and to me, it, it it's it looks like. He goes above and beyond a normal Republican, which is saying a lot, right? Uh, in terms of how he interacts with the corporations. Hey, if you don't do as I tell you, Disney, I'm gonna try to cut into you know your profits and create more expenses for you and create more legislative hurdles. Although I think he accidentally did Disney a favor at one point when he was trying to so-called punish them. If you do give me money like Motorola, then I'm gonna be good to you. Uh, Etc. Am I? Am I? I don't know if again, if it's too broad a question for your expertise. But what, well, what's your take on that? I think it's interesting, and you you bring up a good point there with Disney. Uh, a lot of the donations towards other politicians are aimed to help them make uh, decisions that help a larger industry, like donations from Exxon, for example, to help the fossil fuel industry more broadly. But these kind of donations, like from Motorola and from Disney, are targeting very specific companies and very specific relationships that they have with the state. 
of course, in the context of Disney, you have Disney World, you have, you have, you have their whole operation in, in Orlando. Um, in Motorola, you have um, the you have you you have their uh, contract or their the contract that they wanted to control uh, some of the uh, radio systems for uh, state law enforcement agency. Right. Um, so one last thing uh, about these uh, corporations. Do you have any idea if? Any of them made a promise to stop giving after January 6th and actually kept the promise? Uh, of the corporations that I've, I'm, I'm sure there's a few, but um, off the top of my head, I, I can't really name them. <laughs> uh, are corporations going to stick up for themselves? Of course. Are they going to give money to politicians so they can get something in return? Of course. They're corporations, they don't do things out of the goodness of their heart. So that's why they were never going to keep that place. But I love that you are tracking that and you are showing the hypocrisy just through the facts, just through the reporting of promises made and promises definitely not kept. So everybody check out tyt.com. You'll see Andy's stories there. Andy, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.